Oh, Lord, won't you buy me a Mercedes Benz? My friends all drive Porsches. I must make amends. Worked hard all my lifetime. No help from my friends. So, oh, Lord, won't you buy me a Mercedes Benz? Friends all drive Porsches. I must make amends. Worked hard all my lifetime, no help from my friends. Oh Lord, won't you buy me a Mercedes Benz? Oh Lord, won't you buy me a Keller TV? I don't know any more of those words. I want to talk to you about Jesus, Janis Joplin, and the end of the world. What do they have in common? It's incredible. Jesus, Janis Joplin, and the end, and the end of the world. Uh, those of you who are music-minded at all uh, know the tremendous impact uh, of the uh, late 60s movie and how that impact shifted an entire nation, shifted the entire thought processes, really, of the world. Some people say it started with the Beatles. I, I really don't know if it started with the Beatles or not. But I know that a lot of the music from the 60s is still being played today, loved today, and music is selling by the tens of thousands of uh, CDs and downloads. Uh, but Janis Joplin is just typical of the passion of that era. And if you listen to Janis Joplin, if you listen to those words, many of the songs were songs that just cry out. They cry out uh, to the Lord. They cry out to God. And uh, in this crying out, uh, there is uh, a sense of emptiness, a sense of need, a sense of brokenness, a sense that uh, their lives, her life and the lives around her uh, were really empty. And they really looked for something that uh, their music, the sex and the drugs did not uh, provide for them. While those who loved Jesus in those days uh, built a wall to keep these people out, uh, they didn't think like them, sing like them, talk like them, dress like them, act like them, smell like them, and so they were uh, uh, completely unacceptable to them. Uh, but something is happening again during this time uh, I think one of the things that made the 60s so powerful in music is that it, it, it came out of a tremendous void of, in music and that void was filled by incredibly compassionate passionate people who didn't sing just to find a best-selling song they sang from the very depths of their heart. They cried out to God. There's a song by Poison uh, called uh, Give Me Something to Believe In. Uh, songs throughout the years where uh, contemporary rock bands are crying out for more. And those who have loved Jesus love to stand at the pulpit and criticize these people and tell them if they would only come to church, everything would be better. Well, I got news for you. The church that Jesus is building uh, doesn't meet in buildings all the time. Can meet in buildings, but doesn't always meet in buildings. Uh, Jesus is a gatherer. You remember maybe uh, the night before he was crucified, he prayed for uh, humanity. He prayed for the Jews from uh, the top of uh, the Mount of Olives and he cried out, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. Uh, 
city that slays the prophets. How often I would have gathered you as a hen gathers her brood, but you would not. It is amazing that the compassion and the passion of Jesus was towards the people who were about to crucify him. And even as they crucified him, the cry was, forgive them, for they know not what they do. We are living, living in the time that the scriptures call the end times. Some people say the end of the world. But at this time, it is a time of gathering. It's a time of open hearts and open minds. It's a time to understand that the rejection of love and the rejection of the gospel is not because uh, people are rejecting love or that they're rejecting the gospel, but they are rejecting the flavors that we have added to it that makes it uh, repulsive, uh, even makes it hard to swallow to the point where it makes you want to throw up. Uh, but there is nothing like pure love. There is nothing like the pure, unhindered preaching of the love of God and the forgiveness in Jesus Christ uh, in order to draw the nations to the, the Lord. Singers like Janis Joplin and uh, musicians like Jimi Hendrix, and, and I could make a list a mile long, are, are representative of a culture that is seeking reality. The world is looking for something real. The church Jesus is building is a microcosm of the world where his life and his love and his power is manifest during the daily lives of the people who call him Savior and who call him Lord. And that is an issue that cannot be fulfilled inside the walls of a church. It's something that must be fulfilled in your heart, where there is genuine love, genuine heart of gathering, genuine patience, while Jesus changes us into everything God wants us to be. When I first came to Jesus, I'm a much different man now than I was then. I'm sure glad people love me, and I'm glad people let me change. Otherwise, I would have never stayed. I would have never continued to follow him. Jesus loves the world. Janis Joplin represents the passion, the emptiness, and the need that still exists and is growing in the earth. And at these end times, we need to open our thoughts, open our minds, and allow God to show us the world through his eyes. Not the eyes of an Old Testament hateful prophet, but through his eyes, so that like Jesus, we can be gatherers during these last days. Thanks.